Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to Coffee Talk! All right, America's being invaded. Run for your life, hide in the basement. America's being invaded. Don, don, don. Now, this is my second Coffee Talk on America becoming invaded, or getting invaded, that is. <laughs> Um, in the first one, I talked about uh, Chinese Red Star tanks in Mexico. And in that video, in the comments section, a lot of information is coming to light. Since I made that video just a few days ago, more and more uh, substantiating reports are coming in. And so I thought I would talk more in depth about invasion of the United States. Don't, don't, don't. Has it ever happened? Well, the United States has never been successfully occupied, although in the War of 1812, the Brits came awfully close, and the capital was burned, if memory serves. I'm going straight from memory here, but the uh, Washington, D.C. was occupied. Uh, the, the Port of New Orleans was occupied. The Mississippi River there, where it flows, flows in, in uh, into the Gulf of Mexico, was occupied by uh, British Navy. And Colonel Jackson fought him back in 1814. I know because Johnny Horton told me so. In 1814, we took a little trip down with Colonel Jackson on the mighty Mississippi. We took a little bacon and we took a little beans and we fought the bloody B British in the Battle of New Orleans. <laughs> the bloody British? That's a tough one. So I thought I would talk a little bit more about what if America were to be invaded. Now, in most of your post-apocalyptic stories, whether they be Red Dawn or whether it's, uh, you know, uh, Zombie Nation Z or, or, or Walking Dead or any of those, uh, one of the reoccurring themes in a lot of these films and stories is that Texas is uh, somehow s survives all of this and is the only thing left of America that still is recognizable as America. And that Texas, because I guess by the nature of Texans' toughness, are able to repel these invasions or these overthrows of the government or these terroristic things or even zombie uh, virus outbreaks uh, by nature of the toughness of Texans. But it's a little more to it than that, and there's a little more to that reasoning and why Texas seems to always be uh, the one last vestige piece of the United States left after whatever mayhem might fall. And that's because Texas is perceived as extremely militarily powerful, the most powerful military state in the Union. Now, why is that? It's pretty simple. If uh, Now, these are just statistics off the top of my head from the last time I came across this. I haven't done any research on this top, on this specific part of this uh, conversation. But it's my understanding that somewhere like 40% of the United States Army military bases are in the state of Texas. That most of the garrison troops in the United States are based out of Texas. Part of it is Texas is so huge. It's the size of four other states, at least. Uh, it's It's three or four times the size of Oregon. I mean, really, the Panhandle of Texas is about the size of most of the occupied area of Oregon. But, um, you know, the, uh, the, the thing about Texas is that that's where all of the plants are that make military arms. So Bell Helicopter, the Ospreys made in Fort Worth, um, you know, um, all of the nuclear arsenals pretty much made in Fort Worth. All the missiles are made by LTV uh, in, in uh, I think, I'm not sure where LTV plants. It used to be in Grand Prairie, but I think they might have moved it. But the Dallas-Fort Worth area, the northern part of Texas around Dallas-Fort Worth is where so much of your defense contracting comes from. So the theory being in this, these post-apocalyptic stories is that Texas has the airplanes and the helicopters and most of the garrison troops. And Texas is, you know, typically ran by individualists and, um, you know, stand-up kind of folk. And so if the crap hits the fan, the theory is Texas would secure its borders, pull out of the Union and shoot anybody that tried to come in and take their stuff. You know, Texas is one of the few states in the Union that has its own Air Force. That's right. Texas Air Corps has its own Air Force. Um, that is, it's the job of protecting the governor and the capital from air attack. So the United States, if it falls, the theory has always been that Texas would fall last. 
Now think about this. This is where you need some coffee. <clears throat> Our enemies know this. So wouldn't Texas be target number one? I mean, if you didn't want to fight, spend all of your energy fighting the rest of the continental United States just to end up in a stalemate with Texas, wouldn't you blindside Texas first? Wouldn't you come for Texas first? If you can take Texas, the rest of the nation falls. Don't, don't, don't. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to come to that conclusion. That it might be better to go straight on and hit your foe uh, head on and, and surprise attack Texas. So this leads me to all of this discussion about the invasion that's coming. Donald Trump says this is an invasion. Is he talking about the caravan or is the caravan just a small part of the overall invasion? Is the caravan just the fin of the white, great white shark sticking out of the water as it stalks you? And underneath the surface where we can't see is this great big toothy beast that's about to come and get us? I've been hearing from my viewers and from other sources on the internet and on the YouTube sphere that there are uh, a mass mobilization of support troops coming to North Texas. Is that just to support the troops that are already being deployed along the border in Texas? Or is this something else? Why are all of these troops being brought back from foreign lands? Uh, they're coming back from Germany and, and from Europe and uh, from the Pacific in boatloads. They're recalling our aircraft carriers and all of our fleet back to the United States. That it's very clear that when Donald Trump moved those seven to 14,000 troops to the border, that 50,000 or 100,000 support troops sprung into action and supported that, and that now North Texas is being uh, really fortified and, uh, and built up with. with uh, uh, you know, they could be support troops for what's going on at the border. Or could it be that they're trying to protect Texas from a Texas, from an invasion, from a foreign invasion hitting Texas? Think about this. If I were to attack the border, I would definitely want to insert paratroopers and drop them in by parachute and uh, drop elite forces in behind that to flank the enemy. I mean, this is stuff they teach you at West Point. I mean, they this is stuff they teach you in... Well, if you're a kid of a Marine, you've heard it a thousand times. You know, if you have a front, you insert troops behind to flank them. And you try to roll around the edges. Now, if they're coming up the border, then the border is, a, is, a th is threatened from the Gulf of Mexico to the Baja Peninsula in California. And all of the states that border along Mexico there are potentially areas of insertion. And so... Uh, you know, but if they're targeting Texas in particular, that would explain the North Texas garrisons uh, and why we're not seeing that particularly in Arizona or New Mexico. Uh, are there similar troop movements in Colorado and California to, uh, to act as a northern barrier, barrier against a southern insurgent and, and a, a southern incursion rather and a uh, an area to to stop any paratroopers that might be inserted behind enemy lines to uh, to open up the front from the backside. Now, <clears throat> the United States has never really been successfully occupied for a couple of reasons. One is we're a peninsula, so we're, we have borders on both sides, east and west, of ocean, and across much of our southern border with the Gulf of Mexico. So we're almost an island, and it's really hard to attack a peninsula. The other part is the Second Amendment. You know, the um, Japanese said that they did not invade the United States in World War II because there was a rifle behind every blade of grass. They knew how many guns were in the hands of the uh, private individuals in the United States, and they didn't want to fight a protracted guerrilla war against the American people because there was a rifle behind every blade of grass. <laughs> uh, is there a rifle behind every blade of grass now? Yeah, there's probably is, but there's probably only, you know, one rifleman for every 50 rifles. <laughs> we have to do a whole lot of teaching if we're going to defend this country because most of the folk don't know how to operate a gun. They shoot themselves with it. So there's just a small percentage of 3% of us who still know how to do these things. Um, but yeah, what if the United States were invaded? What would it look like? And I think the, the military plan was laid out pretty good in Red Dawn. 
um, you split the country by laying in a mass amount of paratroopers through the center part of the country. Problem with that plan is that to drop parachutes through the Rocky Mountains, you've got to have air superiority. And I can't see any nation ever getting air superiority over the United States. We just have more airplanes, we have more pilots, we have more defense systems, our airplanes are more high-tech, we're faster, quicker, stronger than they are. So, would that portion of Red Dawn be possible for them to insert paratroopers along the Rocky Mountains? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because of the air superiority problem. Could they activate sleeper cells that are already here? Islamists and um, communists and Antifa and um, the deep state, could they put together some kind of ragtag forces that could potentially split the United States uh, down the middle through the Rocky Mountains by holding certain mountain passes and stopping trucking in, in commerce and the movement of troops back and forth? That's about the only way I could figure you could do it, because you ain't dropping them in from a parachute uh, in the in, in America. You're gonna you have to beat our air force, and that's just not gonna happen. <clears throat> could the communists invade from the south and take Texas? You know, one of my viewers said that um, that they had information that they had discovered that there was um, letters written between Germany and Mexico. And that the Germans told the Mexicans if they would just let them stage up and invade the United States, excuse me, from the south, if they would just do that, that they would give back to Mexico all of the lands stolen by America, which would be Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, the majority of California up to about San Francisco, that the Essentially, the southern half of the United States would be given and ceded back to Mexico for their help if they could conquer the United States. So is Mexico working together with some communist entity to take over the United States? Is that why there are Red Star tanks lined up by the thousands? See my video, um, uh, the, my coffee talk, the, the last coffee talk I did, it'll be in the coffee talk series, where I talk about the tanks in Mexico. So, could these tanks be evidence of this and their intention to take back the Southwest? Uh, some people also are venturing to say that that is why there was such a concerted, a concerted effort by the Democrats to steal the election in Texas and in Florida because they're in on it and that the liberal left-wing commie wing of the Democratic Party intends to uh, occupy positions of power and authority and then open the gate from the inside and let the enemy in. In other words, just let them into California. Just open the gates up and let them come right into California and, and, and take over California. And that they wanted to do that in Florida, in Texas as well. Do I think that we could be invaded from the outside in? If we did, it would have to happen through Mexico, through Texas, and through the Gulf states and through Colorado. I mean, not, not Colorado, but California, rather. And that there's no other way to do it. Our Air Force would stop them. They can't do a, they can't do a beach invasion because our Navy would stop them. Um, unless, you know, they take out our Navy and our Air Force first. And then it's, you know, down to us and that rifle behind every blade of grass. There's a lot of conjecture in what an invasion would look like. Is this what Donald Trump is preparing for? Uh, you know, is this what he warned Putin about, that we were going to, uh, that he was going to mobilize the United States military in a very defensive manner and put a ring around the United States and, and especially across the southern border? I mean, the military typically don't lay concertina razor wire unless they intend to hold a DMZ and unless they intend to fight somebody who tries to cross it. I mean, you, that stuff take the skin right off you. It ain't like barbed wire. It's not even like the razor wire that they sell commercially. Concertina wire is super springy and super sharp. And if you cut it, it will unfurl and uncoil on you. It's liable to take your head right off. If you cut it, you got to have a big man with gloves on one side and a big man with gloves on the other. And you cut it and they hold both ends and slowly release the coil. Because if you just let go, it lashes out. It'll cut you. It'll tangle you up. Concertina wire, oh my gosh. 
I heard if I heard my dad complain about concertina wire once, I heard him complain about it a hundred times and talk about how vicious it was and how much it would tear the hide right off you. And how he'd show me the scars from basic training from getting tangled up in concertina wire, where they force you to try to, to learn how to cross it because you got to cross it. You got to be able to cut it and get through it. So it's Donald Trump preparing to do these mass indictments and these these mass arrests against the deep state or is he more concerned about a genuine communist invasion of the United States tell me what you think in the comment section I will say this it's very interesting times and because there's so little information one can rely on thanks to the fake news media who has their own agenda CNN's agenda is all they report on they don't report on the news anymore just their agenda who's reporting on the news nobody so much news you're missing so much news because nobody's reporting on it they're too busy pushing their own agenda and that includes Fox so local news, internet news, we have to rely on rumors anymore to find out what is really going on in the world because our newscast, the newscasters won't report the real news. All they want to do is harp on and on about their personal political agendas. So, sorry, that was a side rant. But what do you think? Is the forces that be, are the forces that, that be ramping up a real life invasion of the United States from the southern border? Is this why troops are being pulled back to the United States and told you're going to be deployed within the lower 48 states? Or is this why that all of these troops are coming to North Texas, not just to support what's going on with the migrant caravan along the border and the concertina wire they're laying there, but maybe also to cover their flank from insertion or from sleeper cells that might try to attack from the north. Instead of Texas being the last bastion of uh, Americana, the last thing that would remain after an attack on the United States, I tend to think that Texas might very well be public enemy number one to our enemies and they might they might look into taking Texas out first because if Texas goes down they can handle the rest of us no problem or that's what they might think so what do you think is Texas at risk did I pick the perfect time to move north and get the heck out of Texas should you think about getting the heck out of Texas I do know this it's being overran by Californians so that can never be a good thing <laughs> sorry I just I just uh, ticked off one of the 50 states, all of everybody in it. I don't know. I think most of the good folks are either agreeing with me and, and planning to get the heck out of California or planning on some way to take California back. Um, you know, or they're one of them and I don't care what they think. <laughs> so trolls beware. I will come. I will come for you. Anyway, um, yeah, tell me what you think in the comments section. Is America about to be invaded? Or is all this just paranoia, paranoia because we watch too many movies? I don't know. You tell me. God save the Republic.